Hi, my name is Carson Lang, designer and co-founder at Lace Cycling. Since 2010, I have professionally recovered hundreds of bicycle seats. And during that time, I have learned the best leathers and techniques for wrapping bicycle saddles in a high-quality, high-performance manner. I have created this video to share with you the skills that I have learned over the last 10 years so that you can have the confidence and instruction that you need to wrap your own saddle with our Leather Saddle Recover Kits. Included in your saddle kit will be two things. One, a saddle blank template that will be pre-cut and ready to wrap and one small container of 3M Zero VOC high strength contact adhesive. This contact adhesive is non-toxic and you can use it without gloves or a respirator and it is perfectly safe to get on your hands and skin and it will wipe off with vinegar. Before you begin wrapping your saddle, you will need to procure a few tools from your own supplies or purchase them from your local hardware store. The first item that you'll need, and this is very important, is going to be a pair of pliers. A pair of flat-nosed, wide-tipped pliers will work fantastic. Most people will have something like this in their at-home toolbox. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using a pair of cobbler's pliers from 1887. These are a little harder to find, but because of the curve and the added hammer, they're one of my favorite tools and I will use it for this video. Next thing you'll need to find is a flathead screwdriver. This is for removing the leather from the underside of the saddle and sliding the screwdriver underneath this area in order to remove the cover and to remove any staples. Additionally, you will need a blade. This is a Japanese kiridachi woodcutting knife. If you can't find a kiridashi or don't wish to purchase one, you can use an X-Acto blade or a utility knife as long as the blade is brand new and extremely sharp. You will also need a slicker. This is a leather working specific slicker. If you are a cyclist, as I would imagine you are, you probably have a plastic tire lever. The flat blunt end of a tire lever will actually work quite well for this tool. So if you have one of those, you can use that or you can use a flattened polished piece of wood. You'll also need a pair of scissors. Most scissors are not capable of cutting the leather that we supply you for your saddle recovery kit. So if you do not have a pair of high quality scissors, you will need to rely on the knife blade to do most of your cutting. You'll also need to grab a cereal box or a feeder box and cut some small rectangles to spread glue with. Finally, not included in your kit is going to be 3M Super 77 spray glue. This Super 77 spray glue is the ideal adhesive for spraying the leather cover to the foam top. This glue, when sprayed in appropriate amounts, is slightly repositionable and has an appropriate tack time for stretching the cover to the surface. Once you have all of these tools and supplies, you can begin the saddle wrapping process. Use extra caution when removing staples and the cover from the underside of the saddle. Always work with the saddle on a table and push your tool away from the body and hands. Use your hands to gently peel back the cover from the foam. Depending on the amount of glue used in manufacturing on your saddle, you may have a cover that sticks to the foam enough to tear or cause pitting. If your seat has a pit or a tear in the foam like the saddle here in this video, you can use a knife to separate the foam from the cover, save that foam chip, and glue it back in for a repair. If your tear is larger and is growing as you remove the cover, you should stop and move around to the opposite edge of the saddle. Peel back the cover from the area of least resistance and work your way to the other side of the tear. 
Depending on your saddle, there may or may not be decorative seams on your cover. Not all seams are required, and in the case of this saddle, I'm going to make just a few minor cuts to those seams to make the cover lay flat when we are making our template pattern. While it's possible to use the white glue included in your saddle kit, it's recommended you purchase a high-tax spray glue to attach your cover to the cardboard. It is helpful to put a heavy weight on top of the cover while it dries and slick the cover out fully with a slicker. When creating your pattern based on your saddle, remember that the cover you are using has shrunk after you pulled it off. It's important to make your cover a little bit wider to give yourself the extra width that you need for the thicker material. Using a pen, trace the saddle template you've made onto your leather from your leather saddle kit. This will allow you a more accurate cover template with less excess material for easier wrapping. Using shears or a sharp knife, carefully cut out the profile of your leather. Now that you have your cover cut out, it's time to move on to gluing your saddle. Before you attach the cover, you should always inspect the outer perimeter edge of the underside of your saddle for any excess glue or debris that needs to be cleaned. If your saddle has a depression or center groove, you should always glue this area first and allow it to dry fully for at least five to six hours. Using your existing saddle template, slide it between the rails and the saddle to protect your rails from spray glue. Spray adhesive on the foam on the top of your saddle and the back side of your leather template. Be careful to only get it in the center and not on the perimeter edges as this perimeter edge will be glued with the white glue included in your kit. Now that you have glue on your saddle and your cover, we're going to align this along the center, flipping it upside down and delicately placing it along the center line of the saddle. Very carefully place it down and then flip the saddle over. After you flip over your saddle, you're going to want to press down your cover onto the center line. Especially if you have a dimple or groove, it's very important to tack this into place right away in order to ensure the strongest adhesion possible in this area. If you don't get perfectly strong adhesion to the dimples or central grooves on saddles when you wrap the remainder of the seat, that dimple can lift and cause an air pocket. Now that the surface dimple and groove on this saddle has set, we can move to the outside edges and continue to wrap the underside with the white contact adhesive that's included with your kit. This adhesive works best when it's spread across the entire surface that you are gluing thinly and evenly on both surfaces. After this first surface has dried to a slightly tacky consistency, spread a second layer of the same glue over those surfaces again, then press together the parts. An area that causes a lot of people issue is the concave areas on the underside of the saddle. These areas put a lot of tension strain on the leather and you can relieve this by putting small snip marks into the seat and stretching it into place with a slicker. Now that the middle portion of the saddle is glued down, it's time to move to the back edge and the corners around the rear of the saddle. Using your hands and your pliers, stretch and form the leather around the perimeter of the saddle, moving the wrinkles over the edge and around to the bottom of the seat where they will not be seen. Use your pliers to find and pull on any individual folds or creases, pull them towards the underside and the center of the saddle in order to stretch the material around the perimeter edge, eliminating any wrinkles or bubbles on that edge. Once the outside edge that's attached to the foam has been stretched and all of the creases have been eliminated using the pliers, 
you can use your slicker to fold and crease any additional folds against the underside surface to maximize adhesion. Now that the rear and the center of the saddle are glued down, we're going to move to the front of the saddle and the nose. By peeling back the nose and releasing the glue from the top of the cover, this will allow the leather cover on the nose to actually stretch a lot more than it normally would. I have added a small amount of glue to the underside of the saddle nose and I'm going to use my entire hand to stretch and form the nose around the saddle, stretching in one motion to get the maximum amount of even pressure around the entire nose and minimize the wrinkles and folds that cause unsightly areas and wear points on the saddle. Now that the nose is glued into place, we can peel back the underside and trim the extra material away from the leather that is not needed to finish the wrap on the nose. Slick all of your leather into the groove around the perimeter of the underside of the saddle. If you have folds that persist on the underside of your saddle, you can trim those folds away and slick them down with your slicker, minimizing the height of those folds. Using your narrow blade or a box cutter, carefully trim along the underside of the saddle in the groove that is dedicated for trimming the leather material. You may need to trim around the bumper attachment points. These are small plastic posts that protrude from the underside of the saddle that allow for a screw to contact the underside in a proper place. Clean and polish the underside of your saddle with a rag and some rubbing alcohol and condition the top of your saddle for maximum longevity and weather resistance. Thank you for watching and again if you have any questions regarding our products visit us at laycycling.com.